In Schindler's Ark, I explored the deadly politics of the old world. Oscar Schindler was a young businessman. He was an agent of German military intelligence, but he was interested in business. He didn't want to bear a rifle for the Nazis. And he became interested in the Jews as a source of cheap labor. The SS supplied them to him. And he became aware of the Jewish question in those terms as cheap labor. And he and they, he and the prisoners, were bound together, first of all through expediency and then through fraternity and mutual decency. And when in 1944 the uh, Nazis decided to finish off the entire population, including those that were fit to work, the entire Jewish population, he went to enormous trouble, the only industrialist in the whole of Europe, to found a special camp where his people would be safe. Not only that, he was the only German industrialist to go to Auschwitz and negotiate the release of his women from within sight of the chimneys. He managed to rescue people mainly because he was better at subverting the system, uh, at being an operator. He was a better black marketeer than anyone else he encountered. Even the fact that he was a better drunk than anyone else he met was of enormous assistance to him in keeping his extraordinary camps going. Because a number of prisoners have said to me, if Schindler hadn't been able to drink with the SS and then to drink them under the table, their destinies would have been very different. And so Schindler was a walking paradox of an almost literary stature. It was as if some great Gore Vidal in the sky had said to me, OK, Tom, you might be an imperfect novelist and have trouble with characterization, but here's a fully made character for you. The story of Schindler and of the people he saved was the story of a pocket of goodness in a perverted society.